Now, naked eye, my vantage point, our vantage point, I thought he was beyond the arc. I, I did as well. It looked like he, because he, he looked down at his feet to, to ensure where he was, which is a good move. You freeze the defense when you look down. You can see it there. But, but I have no problem with the officials trying to get the call right. It's a four-point play. It's better to take a little extra time and make the right call than to be hasty and make an incorrect one. Officials letting Kirk Spear on know what they were talking about. Taylor converts the four-point play. Big play. And you talked about it earlier, Tom. Houston's a very good road team. So they've come in here, and one thing you want to do on the road is you want to get off to a good start to kind of take that crowd out of the game. And Lewis, with that three, is able to silence this crowd a little bit. Young up the floor, nearly has it stolen, does have it stolen. Wade gives it off to Coleman, leaves it to his left bucket, is good, and the foul. And, and that's the reason why offensively Houston's so good, because they have multiple players who can lead a transition and not just make the play, but finish the play. And it starts here, Tom, with the defense. Great tip. Again, the loose ball battle. They're winning that. They're, they're much more active than UCF right now. And I think a lot of it is because Ramsa hasn't been out there to, to provide that spark for UCF. Well, he is back on the floor, hopping up and down behind Calhoun, who's on the free throw line. Calhoun converts the three-point play. There's Ramsa. He went down hard moments ago. And they said it was a strained ankle, but they have retaped him. It looks like he's moving okay. It's probably going to hurt a little bit more later on. Uh, he'll be fine with the adrenaline, Tom, but tomorrow <laughs> I can guarantee you he won't be practicing. Taylor's three, no good. The rebound, though, by Davis. And a hold called, I believe, against Nick Mosley. 29-13 the score. It's a 16-point Houston lead. Okay, Brain, think fast. What's the girl's name who's always putting stuff on our desk? Come on. It's like a flower or a boat. Brain, I need you. Quick, capital of Moscow, Russia. Nice recovery. 1492, Columbus did the ocean blue. Mom's birthday is May 4th. Karate is from Japan. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is from, well, Brazil. Susan! Way to go, Brain. When you get awesome, flakeless hair you don't have to think about, your mind is free to wander. Advanced head and shoulders. Respect the scalp. Get the hair. Junior, now that you're selling yourself for a buck, you're going to meet a lot of girls. What? When a Whopper loves a woman, they... Here, take this. What's this? It's an extra napkin. Put it in your wallet. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Love. Don't mention it. Whopper Junior for a buck. Bring in some attitude to the BK value menu. They're out there, and they're getting closer with every tick of the clock. This crowd is rowdy, with every three-pointer made. Bang from the arc. With every steal and loose ball lost, they strike without warning. Their message is clear. No team is safe. You don't want to miss this jam-packed day of basketball action. Saturday starting at 1. It's a 16-point lead for the Cougars, 29-13. Now, Houston has turned the ball over three times tonight. Greg, that's kind of an oddity. It hasn't hurt them, and I say that because they average just 9.9 .9 turnovers per game. The last two years, really the last four years, they have been exceptional taking care of the ball. And that tells you that he has a team that where all of his players are comfortable with their roles. They all understand what they do. They've embraced it, and now they're at a point where they're excelling at what they do best. Their guards are all real good decision makers with the basketball, and you've seen it play out here early on in this game. I'm surprised with their style of play that they're sitting at 9.9 .9 turnovers on average per game. Yeah, th that is impressive and still, to me, pretty amazing. As good as their guard play is, to still turn over less than 10 at that pace, that's pretty exceptional. UCF with the ball and a fresh 35 off the foul on the timeout. Ramza. Into the paint, tough shot, high bank. He shot the put back by Davis with his left hand. And I tell you what, I've been impressed with Tony Davis's quickness around the rim on both ends. Yeah, they talk about him trying to get bigger and bigger. He's not a big kid. Mosley able to slide himself open underneath with the answer for Houston. And it's still a 16 point lead. Yeah, beautiful pass by Calhoun there on the baseline for that finish. 
Young with the ball up top for UCF. Harassing defense by Houston. Cody Davis trying to find Jermaine Taylor. He's along the baseline. The Davis is right. Davis down low, backs his way in, no spin on the ball, and the shot falls off the side of the rim. I thought Coleman might take that right to the bucket. I, I think he's thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Under seven minutes to play in Houston, shooting over 50% so far in this first half. Meanwhile, UCF under 30% for their board. And they've just switched their defense. They've gone to kind of a 1-3-1 one, one just to try, to try to change and disrupt the rhythm offensively of Houston. Shot clock under 10. Calhoun for three, and it's good. Karan Calhoun with his 29th three-pointer of the season. He's six foot eight and stepping out and taking that shot. I tell you what, he's got a, a really nice skill level here. Beautiful drive and kick by Coleman. And not just to, uh, to make the three, but to make it off the bounce. That's even more impressive for the power forward. Yeah, he's a junior who went to Raritan High School and Bridgeton Academy before going to Barton County Junior College. Davis didn't realize he was so open underneath. Finally goes to the bucket and gets the roll off the front of the rim. And he's really important. The only other guy out on the floor right now for UCF who's been aggressive offensively. Four points now for Davis. He's two of eight from the floor. Nick Mosley limps off the floor for Houston. And Horace McGloster from Shabazz High School in North New Jersey comes in for the first time. McGloster averaging just under three points per game. There's six minutes to play. Houston with a 17-point lead. Oh. oh, boy. Make it a 20-point lead. How about that? I have to admit, I wasn't expecting this kind of a start by the Cougars. Not on the road. It's hard to imagine. There's Davis again working. And it's important for someone else offensively to step up for UCF because Jermaine Taylor is getting a tremendous amount of attention by a pretty good perimeter defensive team in Houston. And he still has eight points. He's three of nine, though, from the floor. And there's a foul away from the, the backboard. And here you see Taylor, he moves well without the basketball. And even though he doesn't score here, great effort going off the, off after the offensive glass. And again, that's, that tells you this guy, he's out there competing. He's not just a scorer, folks. He looks to do it, and I should say, help his team in a variety of ways. Well, he is no doubt an All-America candidate. Seventh in the NCAA in scoring, averaging just under 24 points per game. Tops in Conference USA. He has eight points tonight, but his team trails at 37-19. Coleman tries a three, doesn't get it. Davis with the rebound. That's Davis's fifth rebound. Ramsa pulls away from the defense, and another steal for the Cougars. Wade in the open floor, gets away from the defender. Teardrop no good, but the putback is there for Coleman. And, folks, let me add, that's a really smart play by Desmond Wade. Even though he doesn't score, the fact that he shoots it high and saw allows for the offensive rebound opportunity by the Cougars. He is the second shortest player in Houston history, Desmond Wade. He's listed at 5 feet 8 inches. 145 pounds, but he is quick. Well, he's got a nice little matchup with Ramza right now, who's about 5'6". And here, again, quick hands. You get it ahead. Now, he knows he's going to have to get this up high and soft, but it allows for that offensive rebound opportunity and great awareness by the Cougars to fill lanes and get down just in case he's unable to convert. He's made a difference since he's come into this game. Desmond Wade with his quickness and his ability to initiate and get them in offense. Jermaine Taylor misses the first free throw, makes the second one. Chris Baez checks into the game for UCF. And Jermaine Taylor takes a seat on the bench. Kirk Spiro, what he was talking about, Jermaine Taylor today, said when he came in, he was a worker. He wants to be good. Some guys want to be good, but they don't work at it. He wants to be good, and he works at it. It's an easy guy to coach. Lewis for three. Davis with another rebound. Sixth rebound for Davis. Young's in a tough spot. Baez to Ramza. Baseline for Davis. Four minutes to play here in the first half. 
Now this, this is an important possession here for UCF. If they don't get those early transition opportunities, you want to make sure you force the Cougars to defend the shot clock. Davis can't get the second shot to go. Foul called underneath. Three minutes and 46 seconds to play. Davis will get a trip to the free throw line when we return. Is this what your phone bill feels like to you? Stop paying so much. Save money with Vonage at the low price of $24.99 a month. Connect Vonage to your existing high-speed internet and you've got dial tone. Get unlimited calls in the U.S. plus 25 amazing features. Just $24.99 a month. Sign up at 877-4-VONAGE or vonage.com. At their basic price, the phone company gives you unlimited calls locally. At $24.99, Vonage gives you unlimited calls nationally. All of Canada and Puerto Rico, plus free calls to five countries in Europe and pennies a minute around the globe, including Mexico. Connect Vonage to your existing high-speed internet and you've got dial tone. Get more of the world, just $24.99 a month. Sign up at 877-4-VONAGE or vonage.com. Conference USA, home to talented student-athletes from 12 great universities. Every year, the competition within CUSA gets tougher, and the rivalries get more intense. Is this looking like a rivalry game now? This is our house. Conference USA. Rivalries live here. Well, UCF is averaging just over 73 points per game. They have just 20 points in the first half. There's 346 to play. And even though they're down by 19, they're still being very patient with their offense. Well, it's one of the things that talking with Coach Spearaw, he, he said, look, we want to look for early opportunities, but if we don't have them, we're not the type of team that can go out and just create a lot of offense ourselves. We have to allow our offensive sets to provide opportunities for us. And unfortunately, tonight, they just have not been able to make shots from the perimeter. Yeah, they are 8 of 27 from the floor. Kirk Spira has had Jermaine Taylor on the bench a couple different times. And, you know, as you and I were talking during the break, as he chats with them now on the bench, that he probably needs to have them on the bench a little bit just because, you know, they're they're banging him around so much, they're covering him so hard that he, he could wear down. And a lot of what he does is without the basketball. With the, what, the type of offense they run, there's a lot of motion, a lot of screens, a lot of action to try to divert the attention of the defense. And this is a pretty efficient offensive team. I mean, at, at home, they're averaging 81 points. They shoot 51% right. from the field, 42 from three, almost 80 from the line. They average 19 assists a game. So they're an efficient and effective offensive team. But credit Houston. Defensively, the activity, the athleticism, the extension of the pressure, disrupting the timing and the rhythm offensively of UCF. Well, Tony Davis's two made free throws give him eight points and eight rebounds. 17-point lead for Houston. The defense is a little more up-tempoed now by UCF. Calhoun with the runner, nowhere near the bucket, out of bounds, and that was about the defense for UCF. It was. That was a really poor decision there by Calhoun. He had a little bit of a rhythm going offensively, but you don't want to have many possessions like that. Just a couple years ago, talking with Tom Penders, they were in here and down 22 with 10 to go and came back and won it in overtime. And we know, again, UCF is an effective team offensively. They get something going positive, they can get right back in this game. Ramsa brings the ball up the floor for the Knights. Finds Taylor, who's back in. Ramsa feeds Taylor down low on the baseline, and he fed him just a little too long toward the line, and it goes out of bounds. Hey, coming up at the AT&T at the half from our studios in New York City, Adam Zucker will take a look at Conference USA Players of the Week, and we'll get a chance to see Steve Lapis's uh, top freshman in the country, plus stats and highlights. and. More. I'll give you a little thumbnail sketch of some coaches. I want to see what the lap man has come up with with his top freshman. <laughs> well, I was with him a week or so ago, and he was working on the top freshman. Is Aubrey Coleman gets a two-point bucket, and for Coleman, he continues some hot shooting. That's ten points on four of seven shooting here in the first half. And he was trying to find point guards. That was his big thing. He wanted to try to find point guards. Taylor for three, no good, but the putback is there by Zondervan. 
A little weak side help for Zonderman. And, and Zonderman is one of those players I think offensively can, can provide a little bit of a spark for UCF. Field goal percentage within the conference is near 65%, which is rather impressive. We're nearing the two minute mark here in the first half. Tough shot for Coleman and a rebound for Taylor. Thought about quickly moving it up the floor. Instead, he gives it off to Taylor Young. Ramsa peeks over at the bench, gets the play from his head coach, Kurt Spiroff. Under two minutes to play. They loft it to Taylor. Nice catch along the baseline. Backs his way in. Whistle blows. And an offensive foul call. First foul on Jermaine Taylor. And then, uh, we, we haven't talked a lot about it, but what about the job defensively that Kelvin Lewis has done here? Establishing the position. And there, a little bit of an elbow, a little bit of an acting yeah. job, but again, you got to sell it. You know, you're out there allowing the guy to hit you. <laughs> Jermaine Taylor's not small, folks. He's about 6'4", about 235, like a middle linebacker. He is big. In football. Well, in fact, he had a, a number of football scholarships when he was in high school. In fact, Ron Zook, the then head coach of the University of Florida, wanted him to play wide receiver for the Gators. A lot of folks were talking to him about, you know, the fact that he could have Enjoyed a national championship this year as Tony Davis is called for the foul out along the perimeter. That's his second. And it's the 18th foul, and it means that Coleman will get a one and one opportunity. And great patience there by, by Aubrey Coleman. I thought he started to rush it a little bit, forced a couple shots, but overall he's been, been under control. And again, I think he loves the matchup against Young. He feels like he can get wherever he wants out there on the floor. And the rest of the Cougars understand that. That's why I think they're allowing him to be in even more of attack mode here in this first half. Coleman with 11 points. All right, Greg, you look at the time. 122 to play. 13 points, excuse me, for Coleman. 42 24. If you're UCF, how many points are you trying to take off the scoreboard right now? Uh, you want to score and get a rhythm offensively, but more importantly, you got to figure out a way to get stops because you can't allow a team to score 45, 46 points on the road in the first half. That's really been as much of an issue for them as the NF offense. Aubrey Coleman leads all scores in this game. Five of nine from the floor, 14 points. His team is on top, 43 to 24. And under a minute to play now in this first half. Smart play here by Coach Penders. They're just weaving it to get the clock down. And again, they like this matchup with Coleman going up against the guards for UCF. Finds Wade with five on the shot clock. Over to Lewis, forces a shot, knocked away by Taylor. Taylor heads to the hoop. Oh, oh. one-handed slam by Jermaine Taylor. There's the athleticism we talked about, and that's the kind of play that can get you some momentum if you're UCF. I thought he was just going to lay it right in, and then he exploded <laughs> to the hoop. Watch this. Well, he starts to land. You see, he's going to land. He doesn't know what the defense is going to do initially, but he said, you know, what the heck? Once they release. I got the hops. Let me go and throw this. Let me turn it over. See the combination of Taylor and Davis, 19 points. The rest of the team just seven. And that's part of what we talked about earlier, how important it is for Taylor to get help from others. And, and Davis is really, Tony Davis has been the only other player who's been a willing contributor, meaning he's at least trying to take shots and be aggressive offensively. I think somebody else, you know, Young, Ramza, they're going to have to also look to be aggressive offensively to score because the defense right now against Taylor in the half court has been pretty effective. 11 points, five rebounds for Taylor, eight points, eight rebounds for that guy, Tony Davis. Shot clock is off. Game clock is at 28 seconds and counting. And a turnover nearly forced along the baseline. Houston's able to break the press. Lewis in the open floor stops and pops no good. Mosley with the rebound. He loses it to Davis. Some time for UCF. Ramsa to Taylor with a crossover. And the tear drops for good. Beautiful finish there. Three seconds to play in the half. Shot no good. Mosley has it. Wave it off. UCF has cut into this lead. Yes, they're down by 15, but they grabbed a little momentum at the end of this first half. Well advised shot there by Lewis that allows Jermaine Taylor to get that little teardrop there to get some momentum as they get ready to go on ahead here. Great balance here. He voice the charge, high and soft, able to finish. 
Nope. UCF making a run. And we are at the half, 43-28 the score. We'll send you to AT&T at the half right after these messages. Excuse me. Do you know the way to Route 70? Nope. What is that? That's the money you could be saving with Geico. Poor fella. Must have been following you for miles. Looks tired. Tell me who's watching. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, get huge biceps and massive shoulders. Get the V cut. A small little waist and a big upper body with the perfect pull up. From the U.S. Navy SEAL inventor of the perfect push up, the perfect pull up changes the pull up bar into a complete upper body machine with two design advances. The perfect pull up's handles rotate with the natural movement of your arms and shoulders. And the perfect pull up is the first pull up bar with an adjustable swing arm. Start with a bicep burning standing row. Rip your shoulders and back with an Australia pull-up. Electrify your arms and upper body with rotational pull-ups. It's three exercises in one invention. It changes the game and gets you results. So here's the deal. Try the perfect pull-up for 30 days for only the cost of shipping and handling. You pay only $14.95. When you order, you'll receive the perfect pull-up adjustable bar and two rotating handles. You'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired workout chart. And when you call, ask about the perfect pull-up ab straps for an off-the-floor ab workout the way the pros do. And get ripped by the perfect pull-up. We have seen some rash, cocky, outspoken fighters through the years, but this guy may be in a league of his own. Vic Darchinian has destroyed the fighters of his division. That was great trade. It's over. Now he'll risk everything to face Jorge Arce. Darchinian versus Arce, Saturday, February 7th on DirecTV pay-per-view or as part of your regular subscription to Showtime. Don't miss it. Vic Darchinian versus Jorge Arce on Channel 121. CBS College Sports presents AT&T at the Half. Your world delivered. Hello, everyone. Welcome inside our CBS College Sports studio in New York. Adam Zucker with you at the Half between Houston and UCF. In the latest Conference Player of the Week awards, the Knights swept things on the women's side thanks to big performances from Chelsea Wiley and Aisha Patrick. How about for the men? Well, from Southern Miss, it's Courtney Beasley getting his first Player of the Week honors. Beasley scored what was a season high, 24 points, in the Eagles' victory over Marshall, shooting 64% from the field. Then in a loss to UTEP, recorded his fourth double-double of the year, scoring a career-high 30 points while pulling down 10 rebounds. He was 10 of 20 from the field and 9 of 11 from the free throw line. It was the first 30-point, 10-rebound game for a Golden Eagle since 2003. And UTEP's Arnett Moultrie was named Conference USA Rookie of the Week. He tied the UTEP freshman record for rebounds in a game with 18 in the minors win Houston Wednesday, 11 of them offensive boards, and he scored a career-high 19 points. Then he contributed eight points, nine boards, and two blocks in the Miners' win over Southern Miss on Saturday. Tyreek Evans may not get formally recognized every week by CUSA, but any team that goes up against this year's edition of the Memphis Tigers know they'll have their hands full with him. Our own Steve Lapis now on the top five freshmen in the country. Today we're going to talk about the five best freshmen in America. And really, we got to start off with Greg Monroe from Georgetown. The 6'10 freshman from Louisiana is really taking the Big East by storm right now. He's averaging over 15 points a game, over seven rebounds a game. And what's so great about Greg Monroe is the way he fits into John Thompson III's offense. He has 49 assists on the season. Almost unheard of for a 6'10 kid to be that good a passer. Our second freshman is Tyreek Evans, leading that 16-3 Memphis team. Look who they lost last year. Derrick Rose, Chris Douglas Roberts, and this kid comes in, and not only that, he's playing out of position as a point guard. He has really bailed out John Calipari's team because that's what they were in need of. And is he truly a point guard? No, but he is a great scorer, a great slasher. Really has to improve on his three-point shooting, but when it comes to getting to the basket and getting fouled, this guy can really finish, and he leaves the Memphis Tigers in steam on top of that. Our next guy plays for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. 
Look at the year that they're having. And Al Farouk Amino, their 6'9 power forward, is really one of the reasons why they've been so good this year. He adds athleticism, and he adds some jumping ability around the basket the way he finishes by dunking the ball, which is unbelievable. This guy has been three-time ACC Rookie of the Week. Got a great chance to be the Rookie of the Year in the ACC this year, and he's a big reason why Wake Forest has almost doubled their opponent's scoring output in the paint. Al Farouk Aminu. I know, when we talk about Oklahoma, we always talk about Blake Griffin. But let me tell you something. There's another guy on that team who's helped them become 20-1, and one, and that's the freshman, Willie Warren. He plays points, he plays through a terrific combination guard and a great score. And the thing about him is he doesn't look like he's a good three-point shooter, but he's shooting a pretty good percentage from the three-point range right now. So here's a guy, takes it to the basket, has shot almost 100 free throws on the season. He's incredible for a young kid, and that's how hard he is to guard. Very strong. Strong upper body, gets to the basket, and knows how to finish. Last but not least, my favorite freshman of all, Samardo Samuels of Louisville. 6'9", 260. He is a beast in the lane, averages 12.6 rebounds a game. And the thing that's so special about him is he understands post position like no other freshman. He gets in there deep with both feet, very tough to get out of there, and he just knows where the defense is without looking for it. And when you have that kind of gift as a low post player, it makes a tremendous difference. So Mardo Samuels, one of those guys you can throw the ball to with a minute to go, and he will make a layup for you. Those are the five top freshmen in America. And sure, there's probably some other ones that are pretty good, but those are the five guys making the biggest difference on the national scene and helping their teams win. Thank you, Mr. Lapis, and that'll do it from here in New York. I'm Adam Zucker. The second half on the way between Houston and UCF, AT&T at the half, continues from Jermaine Taylor territory after this break on CBS College Sports. Hi, I'm John Shear, CEO and founder of Video Professor. I'm the guy that gives away the free computer learning lessons. Well, today I'm here to tell you about a great new product that many of you have been asking for. And here it is, how to buy and sell on eBay, and I'll give it to you free. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I can make you the next millionaire selling an attic full of baseball cards, but I can guarantee you that I'll teach you everything you need to know about eBay by cleaning out your garage and probably putting some money in your pocket at the same time. Now, I can do this because I know that once you try my lesson on eBay, you'll be so satisfied that the next time you need to learn anything about computers, you'll come back to Video Professor for all your computer learning needs. And with over 55 lessons on all of today's most popular computer programs, I know that there's more you'll want to learn. Call now, and I'll send you eBay or any other lesson of your choice free. So what do you got to lose? Try my product. Call 1-800-785-3169. That's 1-800-785-3169. Conference USA Basketball has a history of tradition-rich programs. But our future is now. Conference USA is led by a winning collection of coaches and student athletes who compete at the highest level. Our big moments are your big moments. Be there. This is Conference USA. Competition lives here. Welcome back to AT&T at the half from Orlando, Florida, the UCF Arena. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. Well, we've had a good first half so far between Central Florida and the University of Houston. We'll see if the second half is just as entertaining. Speaking of entertaining, there are some college coaches that have been rather entertaining during the course of their career, and a lot of them that have been in the news just this week, including Pat Summit, who's going for win number 1,000 in her coaching career, such an illustrious career. She'll go for number 1,000 tomorrow. Now, she tried for 1,000 against Oklahoma earlier this week, but she was unable to get to that point. Also in the news this week, 
Bob Knight. Rumor has it that Bob Knight is interested in getting back to coaching. And there's also rumors out there that he might be interested in the University of Georgia. His son, Pat Knight, has also been in the news. Also in the news has been Gary Williams, the head coach of the University of Maryland, and not for the best reasons. In fact, Debbie Yao, the athletic director of the University of Maryland, has given him a vote of confidence. It hasn't been the best of years for Maryland, but he certainly has had himself an illustrious career. Greg Anthony, let's start first with Pat Summit going for win number 1,000. An impressive, impressive career. It really is amazing. And you know what? There's really no one you can compare her to. You know, John Wooden, the great John Wooden, won 10 national championships. But that was over a, a, a minimal amount of time, and that was a different era. She